this is the worst part. Is it? I gotta get this hub lined up with, with this. This thing's gotta go inside of here. And it's always, it's hard to get it to line up. doing today is uh, we loaded the Z onto the Dynapax. We are going to gather some Dyna data. We're going to start with our stock intake, which is our baseline. Once we confirm our baseline data is good, we are going to install the Mishimoto prototype intake that we 3D printed. And we are going to gather some data on that as well. We're Flowbench testing our prototypes for the 400Z airbox. We're testing with the top on and off to see the flow difference. Is there a difference so far? Yeah, Maybe like 20%-ish. This will be the last test for the driver's side airbox. I just have to do the passenger side, both open and closed. basically mirrored images of each other minus this one just has a little bit of an extra bend in this piece. So, gotcha. very close. So this is our brand new Nissan Lee intake. Uh, let's go over the componentry first, starting from the top down. We have an airbox lid. Uh, we have air filter inside, and then we have a lower half air box. We have a map housing, and then we have silicon coupler going all the way to the turbo. Now the Z stock intake is very unique in the sense that the map housing is actually removable from the air box. Now normally you would have a one piece design where this part is molded together with the box. This one though, if you look at it, you can essentially remove the two screws and remove the map housing. Technically, this makes the map housing a reusable part, but we chose not to do that. The reason is that every intake system, the mass airflow curve is calibrated very specifically to the intake system itself. Because we were able to increase the flow by designing a free-flowing intake, what is essentially happening is the airspeed traveling through this diameter is going at faster speed than stock. Now, if you try to reuse the housing, what's going to happen is your mass airflow calibration is going to be very much off. What that translates to is potential check engine light or pending code in your ECU system. The second challenge we face is trying to figure out what's the best way to fasten the two half the airbox together. This is one of our very early prototype. Um, what we had here is some metal buttons. We're using O-rings and we have the buttons bolted to the airbox. What we end up doing on the final design is we have those molded in clips, these things, on the box itself. And we also designed a custom o-ring fastener with a pull tab on it. This will enable you to quickly fasten and remove the upper part of the intake once the intake is completely installed in the car. On top of that, other features of the intake is we were able to gain 8 horsepower and 7 foot-pound of torque over the stock intake. 
Restriction wise, we are also up to 40% less restrictive than stock intake. So the coolest feature of this intake, in my opinion, is definitely the ability to convert it from a cold air setup to a loud intake noise setup. Now for optimum performance, we always recommend that you run it with the lid on because this makes sure that intake is only taking in colder air from outside the vehicle through the grill area, right? But uh, intake is a very personal modification. Some people may prefer to hear the turbo spooling noise when they are driving. Now if you prefer a louder intake, what you can do is remove the six o-ring pull tabs and you can easily convert this intake and now you can hear all the intake noise you want. <laughs> 